Hello and welcome back again to the Summit 8 Qualifiers. We're going to be taking a look at our first match of the day. Ten We're into it. It is mid or feed facing off against Penta Esports. Uh, I guess just Five Penta Sports. Seconds. I'm Lyrical, joined as well by Trimpax. Trent, how you doing? Hello. Radiant Good morning. I'm doing quite well. How are you? I'm doing okay. I'm still feeling a little bit scratchy in the throat, so we're going to work through that. But uh, uh, You sound better. I, I, I'm, I'm I mean, feeling better, yeah. That's good. That's good. Okay, so uh, Penta and Midor Feed. I had the pleasure of meeting the Penta squad recently yeah. at the Asus ROG event, so that was pretty fun. They were just realized apparently that I didn't follow one of them on Twitter, and he was not pleased. Oh so that's goodness. been fixed. DNZ, I am sorry. I'll publicly apologize. He was a little bit hurt. Um, so, so there we are. But uh, yeah, we had quite the lobby. It was very uh, raucous, I would say. <laughs> yeah, it was like there was a little bit of talking when Penta was in there. You know, they're making you feel bad about not following him on Twitter and all that stuff. Uh, and then Mitter Feed joined, and it was just mostly rap just lyrics. tomato. Yeah. yeah, mostly tomato just came in and started spamming lyrics and songs and. You know, I complimented his singing voice on stream. If you guys haven't heard that before, it's beautiful. And then Kezu had the rap lyrics going, and then Oliver had the rap lyrics go. It's things got out of hand. The admin didn't know what to do, uh, and that's pretty much why we were delayed. <laughs> so. yeah, it's it's funny how that stuff happens sometimes. Um, but we're into the draft now, and I, I haven't yep. seen a whole heck of a lot of mid or feed recently. I know that they've been playing in some bigger tournaments, uh, in Dream League and such. Uh, it, when you saw Penta at the the Asus ROG event, it, how did you feel about him? How did you how did you like their style? Ten seconds. Uh, pretty strong. They I can't remember if they were the ones who took down Vega. They Five they definitely made it further three. than Vega, which isn't what I was expecting. Um, but overall, just solid strats. They like themselves uh, a little bit like that bounty hunter was one thing that I, I thought was pretty good for them. They buy a lot of radiances. Oliver is like obsessed with radiances. Okay. And Iron Man is kind of a name that you guys probably recognize. Um, probably the most recognizable person. Maybe him and Boogie. Um, in terms of just like names you'd recognize and players you've kind of known. So solid stuff from them. And uh, yeah, I, I definitely see them being able to uh, take a game off here. But now on the other hand, Minerfi, they also beat Vega Squadron recently and they took a game off Virtus Pro. Mm. So you got to watch out for these guys. Yeah, they're quite good. And a Cinder and Pick, if I've ever seen it, it's a Bane yeah, first team. overall, which led into the Lich, Earth Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Cinder and Patch. It's time, it's happened. <laughs> Like, just if you need bade. a support that's just going to sit there in lane and not even be able to pull that effectively and Radiant be broke as a joke, this is your time to shine. And Oh, my God, they have a centaur. What the heck? Now, I think they were also picking this hero before the recent patch, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but right now, he's he's sitting pretty high in the overall win rate. Seems to be a, a pretty strong dude. He's tanky. He, he got a pretty huge buff with Ten status seconds. resistance. He's one of the biggest strength heroes uh, in terms of like strength gain in the entire game. Right. So seconds. that's, that's going to give him quite the hand. We also have already lost our two key heroes on the Brewmaster and the Beastmaster. I think the step above in terms of offlaners. That almost makes me want to consider the Pac as an offlaner, honestly. But um, Penta are, are more focused on that being a, a possible Dying. mid hero here and a band out the Omni Knight and the Nature's Prophet. But. With a life sealer, this now brings me back to it probably being off lane puck. I mean, does Kezu play puck that often though? I feel like I haven't seen him on it all that often. But I, I agree that like if this yeah. was other teams, I would definitely like it. Uh, maybe he can play it. I mean, Ten I'm not too sure. I'm sure, he definitely can play it. But it's uh, I think he might have actually just played it recently. But Five you're right, it's not exactly like one of his big signature ones. Yeah, uh, it's a, it's more of like a cancel hero. But uh, if it's we're looking for a Kezu hero, then Legion, I guess, is still the big one that would be left, right? With the life sealer now, if you're thinking about infest bombs. Right. Oh, what? Nice. All right. So I've been watching a bit of Morphling. Okay. I'm trying to figure out the new hero. Uh, basically still played in the carry role whenever I see anyone picking him up. I was watching some jabs Morphling last night. I think he was actually against Tomato, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so this will be a little Ten bit of a, a refresher for Tomato. I don't know who won because I fell asleep. Uh, but... Basically, Five just build your normal three. items, and uh, it's kind of cool, right? Because now you can morph your attribute without any mana change, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. So you have a little bit more flexibility in terms of like your su like uh, survivability in the lane versus how you're doing for farming. Mm -hmm. uh, and right now, what do we have? We have a shaker, and then we don't know who the offlaner is going to be, but realistically, there's not some super aggressive four revealed right now, right? We don't have like someone dying or yeah. someone who's just going to walk at you. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident right now in this Morphling's ability to get some decent farm. Maybe even think about switching then the Earthshaker to the three roll, put the puck in the two, and 
take that aggressive four. I don't know who would be left, though. Um, the only thing is, uh, Earth Shaker doesn't pair up too well with a lot of aggressive stuff yeah. either, though. I guess maybe if you play mega aggressive and you go like a totem build, it could work, but yeah. uh, maybe consider just coming forward with the life sealer, perhaps, and some other heroes. So I need a little bit of refresher because I haven't seen a ton of Morphling. I haven't seen any Morphling, actually, since the new right. patch. Uh, the Morph ability, you gain all of the abilities of the of the person that you're targeting, right? Radiant Except team. ultimate. Except ultimate. Uh, yeah, so you keep all your own items. Uh, ooh, and a Baden. So is this yeah. going to be a Morphling mid then, perhaps? This is intriguing. Well, and the thing I was wondering, he does have a talent where you can use it on oh. your own team too, right? Yes, that's not until like level twenty. Ten There's nothing seconds. too amazing here. Or spirit, or spirit. You'd oh, have to like seconds. use his own stones though. Uh, that, so well, it's not... you would get stones, wouldn't you? I guess so. I suppose that's okay. I'm wondering um, if that'd be cool or not. I don't know. Maybe I, it's I would terrible. think. Yeah, I think the the other talent's really good for that too. Uh, I can't remember what it is, but it's a very good talent. So it's hard to, to justify that one over the other one. Choose your hero. Anyway, AA will be the last pick. So that'll be for we, And then it will be the Kezu Shaker then. All right. Interesting. Oh, I have the same Bane set. I love that Bane set. It's super cool. Uh, uh, so yeah, I'm just looking up now. It is the... Uh, oh, yeah. It's the minus 25 second morph cooldown. So that means oh. it, it brings it down to a very low CD on the ulti. So kind of gives you... I, I guess it depends on what's more valuable. Yeah. Because you can go down to 15 seconds because it's 40, I'm pretty sure, at max. All right. Well, Interesting. Weird. I, I I guess it's... I mean, Ancient Apparition, obviously, is amazing against Morphling. Uh, they are lacking a lot of stuns, though. It's going to... Well, maybe they're not because Bane is kind of ridiculous for that anyways. I, I feel like I like Midterfeed's draft a little bit more. Penta, though, it feels like they have something up their sleeve here. Maybe something that yeah. we're not prepared for. Uh, it's definitely a little bit tricky. I think, um, like, Oliver, again, this guy is, uh, he's a Radiance builder, so he loves these heroes like Abaddon. I'm pretty sure that's that's going to be his play here. I don't know which one they're going to run mid, the Morph or the uh, Abaddon. I'm guessing the Morphling, but at the same time, you could run into trouble trying to get some decent last hits if you're up against someone like a Paku who just, like, hop on top of you and you're trying to play at, like, 400 HP. Right. That could be a little bit risky. It makes me almost want to consider sending that Abaddon mid, but uh, we'll see what they do here. Well, I think the thing that's most intriguing to me about this draft is going to be what nine gets done on this morph lane. Uh, yeah. If there's any new like weird builds or anything, I'm trying to think. Uh, the other thing was his morph talent or his uh, waveform talent. It got pushed forward to a lot earlier. Level 10 seems super good to me. Yeah, that's true. Wait, wait for who? Sorry? For morph lane. For morph lane? Uh, Wrong way. Level 10 is plus 10 agi and 20, 20 movement speed. Wait, didn't he get it changed in the last patch? Uh, I don't think so. Unless you mean like really recent, did he? Yeah, I, I think so. Oh, like in 7.07b or something? Yeah, I think it got changed. Oh, you're right. Yeah, he got the plus 300 waveform range. My bad. I was thinking of the 7.07. <laughs> I had so many patches. This to it's, us. it's ridiculous. <laughs> I wonder if he'll still go that over the Agi if it's played in the core cool role. I yeah. suppose if it's like a mid nuker set. But uh, And the other big thing, of course, is that in terms of like big changes, Adaptive Strike is now two abilities. Right. Uh, I mean, I wonder if you could even play it in like a ganking role where you go a strength build with the waveform thing and you just start like running around and finding kills. Because it's it's still a pretty decent stun, right? Yeah. I don't know if that would um, be worth it. I've seen people try it. I think the biggest problem is just the levels. Like yeah. he needs so many levels before he feels really effective. Uh, so it's just, it's rough, man. Like Midas, baby, let's go. <laughs> you think it's really cool. Cause you're like, oh, six. Now I can like be strength and then I'll stun him and then I'll switch over to more agi and then I'll nuke him after the three second cooldown when I can use the other ability and then I'll set right click him. It's going to be awesome. But then you're like, okay, but I need levels in waveform and I need levels in this and I need gold and I don't know. It's tough. I'm very intrigued to see Sounds how like it Sounds like you need Midas. That's all I'm gonna say. I don't know if you can afford to get a Midas these days. <laughs> no, you can't. I'm, I'm Game just... is scary. Yeah. True enough. Um, by the way, Abaddon's eyes are separated from his head in my uh, my screen. I'm not sure how it is for you, but I think that's just because there's a pause. Uh, normally, we're not sitting around for this long after a draft, yeah. but we'll wait and see what it is. Is there any chat stuff going on? 
paused Cinderman one minute. Cinderman said Cinder. one minute. Yeah. What a guy. They're probably changing the music in the house. Do they have a team house? <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think so. I, I believe Tomato's just living with Weeha. At least okay. he was. I don't know if he still is. Uh, when he went to Europe. And then uh, Cinderin's still home. I think Cancel's still home and Kezu's also at home. That's a long minute. This is DNZ. Boom. Unpaused. Instantly. Nice. Nice. Got him. Call it out. It's all in good fun. I think there's a lot of uh, uh, sort of shared respect between these teams. It's no respect. They're just a bunch of, bunch of goons. It's no true. Respect. <laughs> they... I, I was trying to change the word because I was like, that's really not the word. It's just like sort of indifference, but friend, uh. friendly indifference. Is that is that fair? Sounds good, my man. Okay. All right. So it is going to be the Morphling heading to the mid lane by the looks of it here. So I guess this is what we were expecting. Uh, but I'm curious to see just how low he can go. So he's got 500 HP with the Wraith. All right. This isn't bad. With a Wraith Band, three branches, you have 500 HP and 65 damage. And so Puck starting with 68 with the Null and three branches. A little bit of an edge, but overall very even. Oh this my is God. All right. Here you go, what guys. What are you doing? <laughs> this was the lobby. This is literally all that was happening. <laughs> Tomato has changed his music sele selection, though. Yes. He's a much more emotional now. Before, it was very much, you know, some more of the harder rap stuff. But yeah. maybe he's slowly bonding and starting to have some feelings for the Penta guys. It's a possibility. 30 seconds well, we got Boots on the Centaur early. Uh, obviously, Ancient Apparition is so frustrating to play against if you have that open wounds and are able to slow him down enough to get it to proc, but shouldn't be an issue with the boots, I imagine. I don't know. Yeah, relatively okay. I mean, he's so tanky. I right, we haven't really talked about it, but the uh, radiant support duo is, whew, I don't know, AA and Bane. That's a risky business. Begins. Yeah, you gotta be on point these ice blasts. But then again, I look at the dire one, and it's honestly not that great either. Um, one thing that all four supports in this game are lacking is wave clear. I guess AA is the best because you can just ulti a wave or something. But overall, we're expecting very low last hits and net worth on the supports throughout this game. It's going to be completely like kill reliant. Oh, we've got ourselves a D ward here in just a second, I'm pretty sure. But the dual lane mid, uh, RMN's going to oh, be able to help nice. out here a little bit. We didn't really talk about Lich that much. It's kind of interesting that... He was uh, able to be let through the entire draft as nine trading a lot of hits with the Bane. I don't know if this is going to work for him. And in fact, the orb coming out, he's got to be careful. Yeah, and one thing about, um, yes, it's free now, the shift rate, but man, it is so slow. Like, yeah. it's brutal. Level one, only uh, one shift per second. It takes forever. It, it does get better later, though, right? It's a better shift uh, at the last levels than it was before. If I remember right, or is that incorrect? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it is, yeah. But either way, the fact that it's less mana, too, is just huge in the end. Um, yeah. Once you get to level two, you're generally oh, fine Cinderin. anyway. So. Cinderin. Cinderin. Oh, they're trying to bait it out. Are they going to be able to find the kill first blood going their way? But they do lose the Morphling. All right. A bit risky, but who gets the first blood? The Earth Spirit. So not quite as good if it had actually landed on the Morphling himself. But yeah. they'll just have to take it. I guess level two now. I don't know. This makes a lot of sense, though. Like, the way they're laning this with the Lich Morphling, we're kind of wondering, like, how the hell oh, this is no. going to work. But Cinderin. Nice. Waveforming for that one. Trying to make it happen. But it's another kill now going for the Morphling. And, well, it's sort of the way that it's meant to be, I think. Meanwhile, the other lanes, I suppose. Uh, nice for Kezu, right? He has this 1v1 via Baden. Pretty nice time for an Earthshaker. Not a hero we get to see in the offlane all too often, but it was one of Kezu's, uh, I would say, better heroes that he played in the offlane. He always looked pretty good on this guy. Makes big plays for the Echo Slams, and uh, any 1v1 you can get with this hero is great. Yeah. Oh, we see Weeha trying to run away, but I think that he is not long for this world either, as Boogie going to be able to run him down and find that kill. So, right, who got the bounties down there? We got one, Boogie got the other. Yeah. So, nicely done. Just kind of coming down as that support on RMN at the, the uh, two minute mark. We'll probably see the same thing at the four minute mark to secure those double runes. Roll misses up top because we'll be okay for now. And then instantly a TP from DNZ wants to rotate mid. Yeah. Oh, 
Weeha finds the kill on the boogie. Missed that one. So open wow. wounds and I guess just able to make it happen with the chilling touch. Nicely played. All right. Very impressive. Sorry about that, folks. Oh, nine. Oh, God. Right, he's gonna pop well, it's not out. exactly like burst damage down there. I, w I wasn't really looking to, for Boogie to die, but I think he was playing really greedy to get his Tranquils. That's probably what it was, because now he has them, so his game should be quite a bit easier. He also didn't have any points in return. Still doesn't. Um, roll forward. They found themselves canceled. The stun, it connects onto both of them. They are going to be able to orb backwards now, and Cinder in trying to DP out. He doesn't get it. There's a good chance, though. Now we just kind of, I don't know, it's a, it's a chill game, really. Yeah. We Our biggest initiator in this game is going to be Cancel, at least our earliest one, right? We're going to be looking for him to get some infest ganks off relatively early on in the game, maybe even before Blink Dagger. Uh, and then Kezu, his will come a little bit later, and then right. he can kind of contribute to that same thing. The, uh, what's he going to do? So he's going to Blink, Echo the Morphling. Are we going to build a Lincolns this game on him? Probably going to have to but not the best Lincoln's game. Basically just Bane spells. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, if you still got Puck there at the initiation with the silence, it could be pretty rough for Nine. Um, I don't know. It's a tough one. We'll have to yes. see how Nine tries to itemize and just sort of play around it. it. The other problem is that you look at the CS and it's going, it's pretty even across the board. Is that kind of what you would be expecting? Do you feel like a team is getting more out of this than they should be? No, I think the lanes all look pretty even, right? Yeah, uh, Kezu, he does have Cinder up top now with this Fisher block. I don't know, he's, Cinder's only level two though, so he doesn't have that much to hit, give here. Yeah, they got nine stick something. charges too. They, yeah, seems unlikely to be a kill. Roll in mid, able to phase shift that one. Well played by cancel. Yeah, doesn't even bother with the silence after. Yeah, I think overall the lanes are pretty even. Probably the the worst off would be the Centaur, and he's actually doing pretty well here for Boogie. Yeah. He's been getting those bounty runes. He's also uh, Get some of those camps. Going away some of these creeps. Silence mid lane. The illusion runes there. They get the silence. They get the kill. Nine picking it up on the puck. And every little bit that you can get right here is great for the morph lane. They had a war. I'm not sure how that happened. Maybe DNZ was smoked or something. Felt like he used that orb in a, a dangerous spot. Yeah. I mean, he just felt like he was safer than he was. Smoke. We had some. Nice counter picks in this draft. We didn't really get a chance to look at, though, I guess, right? We got our Feast versus the Centaur War Runner. Mm. Nice for the Life Stealer. We got uh, Ancient Apparition against Morphling. So, uh, overall, I think the, the Radiant Synergy is a lot easier to see, as well as their game plan. You just kind of look, you're like, okay, yeah, Infest Ganks, snowball that forward, maybe get ourselves a Roche, get farmed on the Shaker, and then just, like, push and take good fights. But, uh, Dire... A little bit more diff, you know. It's a different draft. We got a a Cora Baden, the safe lane. Yeah. We got a Morphling, some this strange ass hero. Yeah, he's oh, a weird one. Zone boogie. They really want to. Get to. Yeah, they want to get him off the bounty room, but Boogie still gets it, so he's doing pretty well. I do like his build. It's kind of interesting. The two points in the hoof stomp, and then the two points in double edge. It's like much more solo kill oriented as DNZ. Oh, they're waiting for it. He's able to get the jaunt away, and he'll keep Cinder in back. But uh, close. you don't really expect it at this point. As Cinderin brain saps, they're going to be going for the Enfeeble, trying to stay alive through this. The waveform forward, it's a lot of damage onto Cinderin, but he's not going to go down. Lives through that one. Interesting that he doesn't have the uh, Nightmare yet. Doesn't really have a lane, I guess, that he feels can abuse it. Can't really use it to calm him down in the Baden with the Shaker. A lot of different heroes, if they were left in a 1v1 versus the Shaker, you might be able to come up and nightmare them to, like, set up a second round of spells or something from uh, Kezu, but... Oh, Boogie. Down bottom. Yeah. Pump fakes the hook stop, tries to get at the open wounds, they'll find the kill. And the two Raindrops. points in the cold feet. Pretty nifty. Raindrops are so owned in this game, actually. Yeah. Ra Raindrops are owned in every game. This is so broken. Actually, I bought raindrops the other game, and I realized, like, 15 minutes into it, that there was literally nobody on the enemy team that could proc them. Um, it was like only <laughs> hey, that's right actually, heroes. Honestly, that's like a good thing sometimes because the regen from them is decent. Yeah, it's true. It, it, it's not what I meant to do though. It's, I wanted to be more survivable. Um, we ended up winning the game, but 
It was fine. That's that's pretty funny though. I have to say, I don't I don't think I've ever experienced that. There's like top a lane. TA and oh yeah. Well, okay, Zoo Fissure blocks him off. The follow up and Chia Totem. Is he gonna be able to get out of there? All of this extra range around the tower means that Penta can punish. That's something that I haven't actually seen a lot of yet, is the, the added like width of this offlane uh, coming at the cost of offlaners' lives. Illusion. Oh, yeah, all these shenanigans now? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. It's pretty fat, isn't it? It is a wide berth. Oh. Well, eight minutes in, taking a look at the net worth, and it's still looking pretty even across it all. Maybe the big difference is just that Boogie has been able to stay a little bit ahead of the Earthshaker. Uh, and he's getting towards the Blink Dagger. Still a long ways away from it. But the Smoke Gank is coming towards mid. DZ's done a great job this game. 2 0 and 3. What a start. Roll in. Cinderin's going to get caught. They find the stun. Is he going to be able to get the jaunt off? He does. So they find another kill. Nine has really had a great game on the Swarm Plane. 4 1 and 1. And. He's almost highest in net worth. That looked like some pretty suspect positioning. I'm not sure. Cinderin's like up on the high ground here. I guess he, it's, you know, it looks so easy for us, obviously, because they're just smoked up and everything. But um, they're, they're really doing a great job of abusing this kind of stuff from Penta. Yeah. And had no idea where he was and felt extra safe because they had that Radiant War, but they were smoked up. So it's just everything coming together to make Cinderin look like a fool. Oh, no. All Cindy oh, Cind. No. <laughs> Yeah, that's how it goes. It's a hard life. Oh, another jump forward here. They're going to go on to Boogie. Slow him down a lot. Pop the ultimate. And I think that they'll take that uh, for now at least. Probably pretty happy with that. Yeah, we haven't talked too much about Tomato. His life's been easy. Oh, Not many rotations. Now DNZ is down here. So the LT was just used defensively though. So it's a little bit more difficult for him to actually go for something here. It's 1200 HP. Died. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it seems like it'd be a tough one. They're going forward on a boogie, though. They don't hit the silence, and, well, now the stun. He's still raged up throughout all that. Tomato going to need to look for a creep to infest into as he's heading towards Five heroes Shun bottom. the catapult. All right. Can't get me now. Uh, what? Did I? What happened? Did he accidentally take it over? He did something wrong. I, I don't know. Dyer's middle tower is I, under attack. <laughs> that was all right. That was that was questionable at best. Um, because he was free, right? I'm not. Crazy. It's like it's like. Am I missing something? Yeah, I know. Uh, oh, did they? No, they didn't no. have sacrifice. No. No. Uh, oh, they could have though. That's the no, thing. No, it was on cooldown, wasn't it? But it's back up now. Yeah, but. I guess. But that wasn't 30 seconds later. Maybe that's know, maybe that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, we'll, we'll say that's what it was. It was probably okay. a sacrifice. They go forward on a nine, trying to bring him down, but he gets the shift over and now cancel. In trouble. Going to drop. Maybe uh, a little bit frustrated at what happened over in the bottom lane. And Cinder in, get a nightmare and try and run away. Oh. Rough stuff. All right, so we're just saying it's models of an easy game, but then he goes down. Yep. So he's got the armlet. And uh, are we going to get an infest gank anytime soon, though? Dream Coil obviously just used. So if we get that back up, they could go for something. But that's probably going to be a while. However, Kezu is close to his bull link dagger. So this will probably be the time when we get to see it. Mm -hmm. Going to go for the double wave. I don't know. He's not going to farm both camps right now. So I'll do the, the fissure across. Let's say he's been doing that. But he will to keep his mana when he goes back up to the lane. Maybe try and get an echo slam kill with yeah. a, a rotation from someone. We had just got six down bot just by farming up this neutral camp. So I would think he goes top and tries to get a kill with uh, the Shaker. Okay. Seems like be quite strong. I mean, that's the, the strength of this lineup is just quick burst damage. And that's what Morphwain hates to play against. As the Haste is going to get picked up by DNZ. I guess on the other side too, though, you've got the Centaur Warrunner who has the Blink Dagger done as well. Uh, so it's going to be these two Blink Reveals coming out sort of simultaneously. And... Keizu, if he ends up going down right now before the Blink Dagger, this would be so frustrating. And I think it might just happen. They're looking for the opening. The stun is there. The follow-up stun, the double edge, the magnetize, every... Uh, no, the turnaround? They end up nightmaring, fiend scripting. Keizu finding the turnaround and 
Oh god. That was not how it was supposed to go. All right, well, that's one way to get the kill that we were looking for. No Echo Slam required, I suppose. Uh, and that's Blink Tiger for Kezu. So, yeah. down bottom, they have popped the ulti on the Abaddon. Yep. Oh, Armen. He's going to get out of there. They oh. dropped the Dream Coil a little bit late. Whew. All right. The, the got to turn down the music on these teams, guys. <laughs> got to chill out here. Top lane, Cinderin. Kicked, silenced. Done and dead. Gone again. Gone yeah. again, gone again. 10 to 4. Only a 1k lead for the Dire with 6 kills. Where's my Morphling at? He's just been farming. Oh, speak of the devil. Yep, well, they're going Woo! in. And no more strength form for him. Silenced and killed. And that's the combo that we're going to be seeing probably for the rest of this game, unless Morphling can come up with an answer. But uh, is there really an answer for that? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Be tanky. Don't, don't get echoed, I guess. But much easier said than done. Yeah. All right. Well, more sacrifices. They are going to try and build something together. I guess that if you have this Earthshaker uh, combo together with an AA Blast, you might not even necessarily need to bring Tomato in for the Infest gank sometimes. Like, uh, yeah, probably not. Especially like, yeah, it's like Pox there. It's kind of a trade-off, right? They can just have Shaker plus two, basically. Oh, well, they didn't bring him that time, and they end up paying the price for it. Although, with the Ice Blast coming in, Boogie! Woo! He walks God. right outside the range. That was so close. Oh, he's going to get earned up. Doesn't have a lot of mana, though. But Dyer's enough that they can still go make a play. Hub Stomp only takes 130. That's one good thing about Centaur. He's got some issues, but at least there's that. Yeah. Double. And what do we have our Morphling at? So right now he's sitting at about 1,100 max HP with 123 damage. It's not bad. Boogie misses the stomp, though. Cinderin with the sidestep. And he's just going to soak up whatever he can here. Level 7 on him will get himself some time to farm out the lane creeps. Let's need to be careful if the wraparound came. But all the rest of his team is down bottom. Where looks like they're trying to take down this tier 1 tower. And uh, Oliver is indeed going to build a Radiance. This guy, he's obsessed with Radiance. We were talking about, like, when I was telling them, I was telling them, like, what heroes I always think of when they play and stuff. And then they were saying, you know, like, what do you guys think of for Oliver? And they said, I don't even think of a hero, I just think of Radiance. Like, the guy's obsessed. Every single hero. And uh, he gets himself an easy setup there. Ooh, with the turnaround, he kill. take down the Morphling. And looking for more DNZ, trying to get out of there. He does have another roll in a second. But the Ice Blast, it's going to connect onto Boogie. They find the return kill onto Tomato. And DNZ trying to play his way out of there. He's going to TP away and nice. makes it out. Oh, Radiant's man. That was sick. Yeah, those little rolls up the cliffs that you dropped on the other side of the trees are so good for certain heroes that can't chase you. Like the Shaker couldn't get in for a punch or anything like that because of that. Uh, only the puck can chase, and that secures his TP home. Yeah. Link into the Veil is the plan here. Man, Veil is so strong this yes. game. They have a ton of magic damage, but at the same time, that means BKBs will be super strong. However, not really a BKB team Radiant's for the Dire, so this works out fairly well. We have that Lincoln's Radiant coming up here in just a moment for nine. Yep. Well, and, I mean, that's the thing that's sort of tough, tough about it is, like, even if you wanted to go for a BKB against the Shaker, it's still so hard to make it work because Echo is just instant. Um, yeah. All right, Tower. You get the deny. And they're going to get the walk away as well. Penta just backing out. Cancel it check. Be a, it's actually like worth considering double pipe this game. For the you know, dire. could like, be Pipe cool. on a bad and pipe on Centaur. What about Aeon Disk? I don't know. Who would it even be good on, though? Like Morphling? Oh, I guess because, in a sense, yeah, if, then, if all their damage is burst. Yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't be the worst thing, honestly. I'd be curious to see how effective it was. Logically, it, seems, it sounds like it makes sense, right? Yeah. Cancel finds Iron Man, but he's alone. There's no infest here. Iron I mean, Man might actually... Oh, no, okay. I thought there might be rotations in time or something, but it's He didn't have his much. raindrops. That's true. And there's an arcane rune, so that's pretty rough. Dyer's well, top tower has fallen. Tower goes down for the Dyer, and mid lane, they're going to go for it again, trying to find a kill here on to Oliver, and his Radiance will not be there in time to save him. He's got the ulti to use, 
but will he be able to live through it all? Another shield, trying to still survive through this. The silence, the stun gonna miss Keizu. Finishes it off, Oliver going down. We are on point again. It's cr so crucial that they get these ultis off. I mean, it's just amazing this game. The Abaddon, the Centaur, and the Morphling. All of them relying pretty heavily on HP regen for survival. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And Weehaw just makes him look like paper. Yeah. That here. We have the uh, hood on Boogie now, though, so that'll help him quite a bit. Yeah. And it'll just be bots next for nine, so still just your classic Morphling, guys. Not too much has changed. I mean, there's a lot that's changed, to be real, but he also went for that waveform range. Pretty, uh, oh. look at the range on it. God, that's great. Yeah. Wow, that actually is insanely huge. Holy. Look at I him go. Mind seeing, uh, I, I heard there was a bug where it, it reorders the puck skills, so... Oh, top lane. Ice Blast won't connect this time. So he's able to, that was nice. He pops the ulti to dispel the open wound so he gets out of the range. Nice. Smart. But, uh... Yeah, there's, I guess there's currently a bug if you morph Puck, it like reorders the skills, so he's going to have to be cautious on that one. But you can think about that, if you copy Puck and use all of his burst, because everything besides the coil, obviously you don't get that, still very strong. Yeah. Oh, it's done. Alright, cancel. Looking so stylish this game. Yeah, he's just playing his way around him, but he's going to end up paying the price for it nonetheless. That's what happens when you try and play stylish. <laughs> yeah, you get punished. They have Blink in Fest Bomb up top here. Oliver needs to be careful. He can obviously pop the ultimate afterwards, but he doesn't cool down for another four seconds. And yeah, he's playing it safe until it's back up again. We have that Deso now done as well here. So that opens up Roche for the Radiant. And then he's considering that Nullifier next. Pretty cool item. Seen it built on quite a few life stealers. Uh, nice against Morphling. Could disable the Lincolns. Even just disabling things like the uh, the hood active and stuff is pretty cool. Yeah. Down bottom lane. I guess that they're going mid with this instead. Thought they might try and go into Oliver, but it's too difficult to try and jump him. Yeah, I'm not sure. There, it's a long run that's spotted by this ward here in the dire jungle. So they're fully aware that Kezo's rotating down here. And that means Boogie's going to get out. Didn't have a TP, though, so things were getting risky. And, yeah, they just know he's gone, so they'll bail out and start farming. Yeah. Looks like he wants to get an Agnum Scepter next. More stuff to keep him survivable in this one. Um, the Lich Phase Boots. You know, I was a little surprised to see this still stick around, but it's pretty good. Well, Ooh, I mean, you got to get into that armlet later on. got to get hey. the damage talent, you know, level 15. It's a tough life these days. Uh, it's very nice to have the phase boots against a, a life stealer. Pretty yeah. sweet in a game like this. And closer to that radiance as well on the Abaddon. Weeha has his Midas long completed and trying to get towards a glimmer cape as well. Uh, bottom lane, cancel. Could think about doing something down here, but it's so tough to bring down this Morphling. We're already talking about the magic damage on the radiant side, but uh, with the Morphling, of course, it's still going to be pretty magic damage focused. Some of his nukes once he gets some magic going, so nice game to get a Glimmer Cape. They actually move right past wow. the Centaur in their own jungle. What the hell? <laughs> Go where they will least expect you. Looks Boogie's like, on a whole other level right now. Looks like we has done, though. Top lane, yeah. There's they that ult for it, though. <laughs> It's pretty well played. They they set that up perfectly so that it was just the range creep and Weeha are able to take him down. Wait, they ulti him too? I mean, this is an AA, guys. But uh, turn happened? around. Bottom lane. Mid lane. Uh, their spirit dead. And in the meantime, Boogie is going to cut creep waves because that's a thing. Is Blink Dagger done? Trying to get out of there. Jump away, little buddy. And he's, he's good. Slippery fella. Back to his Radiant's teammates, back to some ward covers they have laid down there. Kezu uh, picked up a Void Stone early on. I'm guessing he was going to go for a Yule's. Probably to like help pop the Lincolns and stuff to keep the combos going. Just a generally decent item on Shaker, but he wants a Shadow Blade Radiant's instead. The Mana Regen. Value. Oh, he did finish the Yule's. My bad. No, oh, he definitely just still had all that gold. Okay. Yeah, okay. He was holding it for a while, but he does actually go for the finish, so... Still a solid item. Weehaw goes down again. I mean, that's going to be a common reoccurrence if he's just chilling by himself on a way. The other thing is, they just, like, look where they just killed a hero. Literally under the tower with a wave, and they can't push it. Yeah. It's pretty.
pretty indicative of the state of the game right now. But I guess, it, like, that's the thing that I, the thing I'm really curious about in this game is if it's a problem for them or not. Because Morphling late game was always that, like, be all end all carry that can just win you the game. And I'm wondering if he's still the same way. You know what I mean? Uh, he's still strong. I mean, I, I'm sure. I, I guess he kind of was that status. Yeah. He still kind of is, right? He's still going to farm a bunch of items. He's really slippery and annoying to deal with. I think they have a lot of really good answers from this game, so I don't know if this game will be a really good judge for it, though, because he, like, can't play super risque. A lot of more things would be down here, like, hitting a tier 3 or a tier 2 at this point, right? Because yeah. you're like, oh, the second my Lincolns pops, I'm just out of here. But he can't really do that. And plus, when we used to play it like that, that's when you had his old ultimate, where you could just move it around the, the map and split push a lot better. One would assume that this Morphling should be a lot worse at split pushing because he doesn't have that ability anymore. Right. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Boogie is just going to Boogie's face tank the tower for a little bit. Attack. Take it down slowly. We'll see if Cancel decides to go on it. They actually have vision. Oh no! They spotted him in the trees and now just going to jump away from him. The coil is there and oh, Boogie's going to TP away now. Yule Scepter left up. Yules. Yeah. Uh oh. What's happening now, buddies? They are going to be able to get the silence off and now the ice blast gonna miss but they still find the kill and Kenzo has a blink yules if he wants to chase oh, I thought maybe he'd go after DNZ but I guess they don't know where everyone else is oh, space created for nine who's pushing down bottom all right they're gonna go on this baton but silence there again and yeah nine does get it though so he's getting his rat on he's gonna go top and try and deny this oh, tomato uh, Turn, nine, jumps away, Lincoln Sphere popped, but he's fine. He could morph and slow him with open wounds. Radiance oh, the dream, he's going for it. Oh, they got him <laughs> with the mist coil. And now they jump forward, nine, finds a second kill. What a yeah, The range wasn't quite there. <laughs> he tried to go for the, the morph play. I think that was the first morph we've seen this game, unless you saw one. I, I saw his on cooldown earlier, but I don't know what he used oh, it on. Oh, okay, so he must use it on but still, it's pretty funny. Well, so I wonder if the talent is better or the allies is better. I feel like the allies might be better because of the baiting plays you could do. Right. Or can you, I don't know how that works anymore. Can you tell? Uh, I, I don't, don't think even you know. can tell. It, it probably just has that same bug where it used to be like the level where it'll be, it'll stay like lich level 18 or something, for example, but I'm not sure. And then again, it's not like you can just bait with an illusion. You might not want them to jump you. It could still be kind of scary, especially with the forms of initiation the Radiant have. So. Yeah. <laughs> the waveform attacks Radiant thing is kind of cool. Um, I, I guess, haven't actually seen it in action yet. Well, so he's been using it where if you waveform, it counts as an auto attack going through them as well, I think. That would be my understanding as well. So nice little addition for the carry morph. Yeah. Got higher damage on your waveform and i mean that's, so let's say that's pretty significant yeah that is a lot of damage particularly i mean he doesn't even have that many damage items right now no, they do scan uh the radiant into the rush pit so they're aware this is happening they have the centaur ult they have everything on earth spirit there's a chance to get here but dnz doesn't have a tp he's also so close to a blink dagger so they're sneaking this in at a spot a time where it's like pretty much the best case scenario dire can't really fight but with the baton coming through yeah, he has the radiance. Oh, but they're going to find DNZ up near the shrine. That's a big one. Yeah, that's huge. Now they looking for a chase. The they need to be able to find a kill here. And Weeha, he is going to go down. Now Cinder and also maybe in trouble. Pop the Fiend's grip on him. Or excuse me. Yeah, they use it now. But can it be a Photic shielded off? And well, easy peasy. Now they go into Roche. And that's 243 damage now. Still sitting 1100 HP-ish. Hanzo could go Not for bad. a flick play here. They don't have any vision on him. Oh, walking in. They're thinking about it. Ah, he doesn't want to nice. go. Alright, Dyer looking pretty solid here. I think Cancel should be fine here. He'll worm his way out of there. Grabs a Dagon, so that'll give him a little bit more burst. Nice to try and keep blowing up DNC. Combos well with his veil. Uh, not going for anything that's going to help him in towards that uh, Dream Coil rapid fire, though. We've seen some pucks opting towards like Mjolnir's and Maelstrom's earlier on, just so when they get there. I mean, he still has quite a bit of time to work on it, but if you don't have those kind of items, you generally have to go for the uh, 420 GPM instead. Yeah. 
Have you been seeing Probably. it be that good? I, I feel like I've only seen the 420 GPM still. Uh, I don't admit there were a couple of games where it was picked up, but overall, I'm generally a bigger fan. I think it's just like you need to be snowballing pretty hard already to justify yeah. the Dreamquell rapid fire. Like, you have to be able to get all these items. If you don't have like five slots filled, I'm pretty sure you get 420 GPM, especially because you you might want to change out some of your items, like get a scythe or something. Um, get some better defensive tools for your teammates. If you don't have a Lincolns already, you can buy one just to help out your carry. All that kind of stuff is uh, given to you with the 420 GPM. Yeah. Oh, maybe a big play of Bruin here. They have the Aghanim Scepter on they have Centaur no coming out right now. And they walk forward, go on to Boogie. They have the damage reduction, though, so they're not going to be able to find that much damage onto the Dire team for this. Keizu There's is no just gone. That's going to be Cinderin and Viha dropping super low. They turn to fight and are going to be able to get the Fiend's Grip. Can they kill off the Morphling? They burn through the Aegis. The stun is going to connect still, though. And now the chase is there, and it's not going to be enough. Tomato does get out, but they end up losing three. Did he just not get his strength form switched over? Am I crazy? Oh, sorry. The, the Morphling. What do you mean? Well, because he was fiend script, but you can you can switch to Agi or switch to strength when you're. Oh, he was. Yeah, he was already really low when okay. he got grabbed and everything. So. And he was being right clicked at the same time as well. Yeah, I guess that's fair. He ended up going for the morph cooldown instead, so uh, kind of makes sense, like you were saying. They do jump forward, miss absolutely everything on the stun, but they still find the silence onto the puck. He goes down, DNZ taking a lot of damage, but Tomato has to run away because there's just too much coming out. The Echo Slam, it doesn't matter. They are not going to be able to make anything of this. Yeah. GG is called. Wow. It, it looks pretty good, right? They were in the Roche Pit. Looked like they were be, uh, the ones to get it, but they didn't know exactly where the heroes on Penta were. Then they actually blew up DNZ, and I was thinking, okay, this looks pretty good. From bitter feed, but a new morphling kind of looked a lot like old morphling, uh, just not quite as great at slip pushing, I guess. But overall, still very tanky, hard to deal with, yeah. high damage. Twelve, three, and nine. I think DNZ was uh, my MVP this game. Thought he played really well in the Earth Spirit. He made so much happen in the early game. Uh, by far the standout amongst the supports. We uh, hit some really good ice blasts, but he can't do nearly as much uh, on his own. Yeah. And plus, he couldn't do anything until level six, whereas DNZ was making plays from like level one to five. So, very impressive stuff coming up from them in the first game of our best of three. Yeah, definitely. Uh, really impressive. I, I think that you don't necessarily need to like ban the Morphling. Maybe you just draft where you can have answers to it because they were sort of forced into last picking a Lich, right? There wasn't really, or rather, last picking an, an ancient apparition. And yeah. that was sort of the problem of the draft. Um, yeah, we talked about like the idea of um, like, DNZ can make plays happen. He can do stuff, uh, and we were worried about the support duo for the Radiant. So yeah, as you said, that, that's kind of why they got pigeonholed into Bane and AA support duo. Uh, it was good because they had Kezu and Cancel as two very active, like initiating cores. However, that meant that they only had one carry in Tomato, and generally single core or like single right click drafts with Life Sealer don't tend to do too well. Yeah. Maybe also thinking about like uh, uh, banning out the Lich. I don't know if you have to, but it was, I think, part of what allowed Morphling to do so well in that mid lane and get away with being greedy. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be uh, game number two coming around right around the corner. Penta versus mid or feed. And Trent, any final words before we go on to that one? Uh, no, just uh, looking forward to see what our draft entails next. They tend to have some more tricks up their sleeves. Easy Radiance of Baden classic all right everybody we'll be back in a few see you guys for game number two